We've got a, a, another guest um, that's going to uh, talk to us about uh, mindfulness and meditation, uh, kind of a follow-on to the introduction of why is that work, but I'm not sure if, um, if uh, Dr. She Parr has joined us yet. Yes, she has, AJ. She has not. She has. She's on. Oh, on. she has. Yes. Excellent. Great. Uh, Parneet, welcome to our town hall. Um, I see you. Fantastic. So a brief introduction. Um, last week, we talked about this uh, corporate challenge that Wise at Work, uh, they're, uh, they're known as Wisdom Labs, um, uh, has put forward for the month of October. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity for us as a, as a company to really uh, just spend some time and think about uh, resiliency and mindfulness. Um, and frankly, just kind of an opportunity to, to, uh, to kind of just use meditation as a way to reduce stress in our lives. And so I think there's well over 80 companies that are participating. I want to just offer, first of all, congratulations to those of you that have uh, joined. We have nine folks who are actually active in this uh, challenge. Really encourage all of you, if you've never tried meditation, which I actually am in that category, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, this has been fantastic. Um, and so uh, uh, congratulations to Elizabeth Stillman, who's actually the, on the leaderboard here <laughs> like quite a bit. And uh, Lucky and uh, Eddie and Dave Mejia, Jacques, yourself, you're participating. Yep. We have Nicholas, uh, Vivek, and Carol Hubbard. So, hey, thank you for participating in this. Um, <clears throat> love to get some feedback after the end of the month. Uh, we think this is uh, could be a, a useful tool for us as a company. It's just because it, the work we do is actually typically fairly stressful under normal circumstances. And under these circumstances, I think, you know, all of us have a little bit of anxiety. And so, uh, so practicing meditation could be helpful. So uh, Dr. Pa uh, Powell, who is uh, the chief science or medical officer, I think, at Wisdom Labs, is going to talk to us a little bit about uh, meditation and maybe even take us through a short meditation. So over to you. Uh, Jacques, can we highlight um, I, I uh, party? I did. Um, I, we may have, I think we just had a technical difficulty, AJ. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did her, did, uh, Give her a minute to rejoin. Okay. Yeah. But you know, I agree. I agree, AJ. You know, I've been uh, been uh, you know as participating in the app, and uh, you know they've got a variety of different uh, options and, and different meditations for different uh, you know to help with different focus and uh, uh, you know letting go as well as other things, and it's been uh, it's been very helpful. Um, I'm I'm glad we got introduced to this. Let's see if uh, Marty has been able to join us. Hi, guys. So, can you hear me? Yes. We can. Excellent. That with my Wi-Fi. And so I've just switched to my phone um, from my laptop. Uh, but as long as you can hear me, it's all good. And uh, uh, Ajay, should I uh, jump right in? Sorry, I missed. I, I know you were congratulating the folks who had uh, joined the challenge. Yeah, please go ahead and just jump in, and uh, we're all excited to have you on. So, Over well, you. thank you for having me, and really lovely to meet all of you. And thank you, Ajay, for sort of taking this initiative of introducing mindfulness and meditation to your teams. Um, so, what I thought I would do, because I have a few minutes here, is for those of you, especially if you're not familiar with mindfulness and meditation, you know, a very natural question is why should we even do this? And this was uh, certainly a question that I was thinking about many years ago. So just, you know, I'm a physician by training. Uh, I'm the chief science officer at Wisdom Labs. And as Ajay mentioned, you know, we're solving for stress, burnout, and loneliness in the workplace. And um, for me, I was experiencing a lot of burnout, um, you know, through the practice of medicine and healthcare. And uh, we really ha having no idea about how I could take better care of myself. But I'm also a scientist. I'm really interested in understanding how the brain and the body works. And, you know, for any practice that I do, I'm always interested in, you know, what is the evidence behind this? Is this actually going to do any good? Um, so I'm happy to report that, you know, when I've poured through the 25 years of research that we have into the benefits of mindfulness uh, and meditation, there are plenty, and I'll touch on a few of them. But rather than talk about it, I want to um, give you guys a, a, a visceral sense of it. So uh, I want to start by, um, you know, rather than giving you definitions of mindfulness, I want to play a game with you if you're up for it. Is that okay? Absolutely. 
<laughs> okay. So we're going to play a one minute game. It's really simple. Uh, I'll keep track of time. But when I say go, I want you to close your eyes and just follow your breath. So just follow your breath in and follow your breath out. But here's the catch. You can't think of anything else. Okay. So just, just for one minute. So if you're ready, go ahead and close your eyes and go. Okay, you can open your eyes. So, um, and I'm afraid I can't see all of you on my screen here, but just, you know, unmute yourself and let me know how many of you had at least one thought that was not related to your breath. <laughs> I, I don't hear anything. Is everybody nodding their heads or? Yes. Saying? Yeah, people are raising their hands. Yeah, yeah. people are raising their okay. hands. Okay, so here's, I have good news for you. You're all normal. Your brains are normal if that happened. Um, but what I want to point out and I, what I want you to really notice here is that when we try to focus on one thing, when our conscious mind tries to focus on one thing, something very interesting happens. Immediately, our attention starts to wander, right? So I'm sure you noticed that your mind was wandering away into thoughts of the past. You know, what did I do yesterday or maybe 10 years ago? Or maybe you started thinking about your next meeting or what might be coming up for you. So this tendency of the mind to think of the past and to think of the future is an important quality, right? We need to tap into our memory and we need to imagine the future so that we can plan uh, and execute things. However, what the research shows is that on average, and this is really interesting. So think about when you're trying to focus on a project at work, when we try to focus on one thing, our minds wander 47% of the time. Mm -hmm. So half the time our minds are wandering even when we are trying to focus on something. But more than that, this has a very important consequence for our well-being because the research also shows that the more our minds wander, the less happy we are. So I'll say that again. Mm -hmm. The more our minds wander, the less happy we are. And the reason this happens is because there's a particular attention network in the brain that comes online for that mind wandering. And if we stay there, that's when we start to get into these ruminative loops of thinking that becomes sort of the basis for anxiety and depression and other disorders. But luckily we have other attention networks in the brain that we can train. And this is a beautiful capacity. It's called neuroplasticity. It's a property of the brain to change, for, to build new connections and to build new pathways based on um, you know, how we train our brains, how we think, how we direct our attention, how we direct our emotions. <clears throat> and that in essence is a practice of mindfulness and meditation when, where we are directing that neuroplasticity. So instead of practicing anxiety and fear and anger and frustration, we can start to practice calm and focus and uh, empathy and compassion. Um, so this is, this is the essence of um, mindfulness practice. Uh, and so, you know, we're going to do a short practice in a second, but I, what I hope you're getting away uh, from this little exercise is that one, it's, it's okay if your mind wanders, that's a normal quality of the mind. But as you start investigating meditation and mindfulness, and there are many different techniques, please know that when the instruction is, you know, bring your focus back to breath, or maybe the instruction is to focus on your body, or the instruction might be to send out, you know, wishes of goodwill to, to others. 
whatever that is, they are targeting. These are tested research-based techniques that have been known to strengthen three particular brain networks. One is our attention networks. And these attention networks that we just, like we just tested are really important for, you know, when we're feeling stressed or, or stress, you know, uh, frazzled, uh, we can quickly stay calm, stay focused, but very importantly, tap into our creativity. Um, they also help to strengthen our emotional regulation networks, so which help us to navigate, you know, the, our feelings of fear and uncertainty um, and so on. And then finally, the um, it helps to strengthen our uh, pro-sociality networks, which is our ability to give back to others, to be empathic, to be kind, to be generous. So I hope that gives you a, a, a brief sense of the benefits of mindfulness and meditation. And of course, it has a direct effect on our immunity. So it helps to boost our immunity and reduce the inflammation in our cells, which is very important from a health standpoint. And um, people who practice mindfulness and meditation are also more likely to stick to healthy habits. So they're more likely to eat better, sleep more, exercise more, and so on. Um, so, uh, you know, I'll just pause there for a second, Ajay, and just get any feedback or questions you might have, and then we can do uh, a, a foundational practice. Great. Fantastic. I think there are some, some questions. So... Um... Uh, I think Kevin, you had uh, posed uh, uh, a request to ask a question in the chat window. Kevin, are you? Can we unmute? Can you unmute and? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. My my question is like, if you're focused on a project very intensely, okay, sometimes it's good to completely relax and and, and work on a hobby or or something, or, or a form of meditation. But sometimes, like the solution to a problem, can be an inspiration, like like out of left field. You know, it's, it's like the capacity of the mind in that way when you when you kick in different frequencies of, of the brain, right? Um, more relaxed state. I mean, like maybe even in a dream, you might even you might even sleep and overnight and early in the morning have a dream, and and there's a there's like a solution to a problem. And, and th does that address this or, or is that, is that so, part so of that's a, Yeah, that's a brilliant question, Kevin. And what you're alluding to is a science of creativity. Um, so again, there's a lot there, but I'll try to summarize it very quickly. Mm -hmm. So what we know about the science of creativity is that as, as you mentioned, you know, if you notice, when do we have those breakthrough ideas and insights? It's usually like first thing in the morning uh, or when we're in the shower or when we're out on a walk, right? It's usually not when we are actually trying to figure things out okay. and sitting with yeah. our colleagues in a team meeting, right? That's yeah. usually not when we have our best ideas. And the reason is that for those kinds of insights to arise, um, Let's, let's, um, you need a quiet mind. You need a, a, a quiet mind and you need a, a calm mind. So the worst place that you can try to be creative is when everyone is feeling stressful about a project and then everybody tries to get into a quote unquote brainstorming uh, session yeah. uh, and you have a deadline. Uh, that's kind of like the worst condition for your brain to come up with the best idea. So you need to have a calm mind and you need to have a quiet mind. And the reason for that is that if you think about your conscious and subconscious parts of your brain, you know, your conscious part of the brain, the capacity of your conscious brain is limited. Most of the data and memory that you have is stored in your subconscious brain. And there, you know, you have all these ideas and memories and, the, you know, information that's coming from outside and your subconscious brain is constantly uh, mixing and uh, breaking and bending those, those bits of data in many different ways. But the, the amplitude of those frequencies, of those connections that are happening, of that electrical activity is usually pretty low. Yeah. The amplitude of the electrical activity of our regular thinking in the conscious brain, you know, all the things like, oh, what's my schedule today? Oh, I have to get to that meeting. Oh, you know, you know, all the conscious thinking. And not to mention when we get into that ruminative state that I was thinking about, you know, the mind wandering, where yeah. we get caught up in thoughts of the past and the future, that noise, <laughs> that literal electrical noise is so loud that all those brilliant ideas in your subconscious brain, you know, they're, they're there. They're there right now. It's just yeah. that you're not picking up on that because there's so much noise in your conscious yeah. brain. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. 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 That's, that's... So the 
So the whole point, you know, that's why, you know, first thing in the morning, you're not, you're not stuck in that kind of ruminative thought, your mind is, you know, restful after sleep, that, and then you have that um, brilliant idea. Or when you practice meditation and mindfulness, again, you're doing the same thing, you're quietening that, that um, thought activity, um, and you're being fully present. And that's most likely when you will have those, those insights. Yeah, because you need the subconscious to, to assist with that. And, and I wish I could talk more because I'd like to ask about like the Jungian concept of the collective subconscious and how that relates. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's a whole other uh, that's a whole other discussion yeah, for yeah. sure. Too bad. Yeah. We have some uh, excellent uh, um, uh, comments in the chat window. Uh, I have a question for you, and then we go to a few others if you don't mind. Um, uh, sure. Barney, so as one of the things that we do as a firm is we we frequently offer strategy uh, workshops for our clients around their business strategy or competitive strategy, and this is where we really expect everyone to kind of come in and be creative instead of kind of being stuck in the old way of doing things. To, so we can kind of create some very genuine options. So would you recommend kind of before when you get everybody together, just kind of run a meditation session to kind of quiet the mind or what, what's your recommendation to try to really get the creativity of folks out, whether it's a strategy workshop or a brainstorming session? Fantastic question. And yes. Uh, and actually there's a specific practice that has been shown to be more helpful just before like a creativity or brainstorming session. Uh, it's an uh, open monitoring practice and open monitoring is kind of, um, if, if you're familiar with, uh, it's the practice where you're asked to, um, so just like sit and become aware of all the sights around you. If your eyes are closed and just become aware of the, you know, the darkness or any images that might be coming up with your eyes closed. Uh, it then asks you to become aware of any sounds in your environment, hmm. any sensations in your body. So basically you're just becoming this neutral observer. So imagine, you know, imagine yourself sitting outside like in a cafe uh, and you know, you're sitting back and you're just watching the world go by. Similarly, in this meditation, you're just stepping back your, um, as a neutral observer and you're just watching the sounds, sensations, uh, and images that are coming up in your consciousness. The key in that practice is not to get carried away with any one particular sight, sound, or sensation. So, you know, your, your mind will have a tendency to say that, oh, that's so beautiful, and think about that, or, you know, follow a particular sound or get caught up in a particular sensation. So when you notice that you've been, you're getting lost in that, simply bring your attention back to being a neutral observer. And again, just becoming, just noting. So you may say, oh, you know, sound of a car or mm -hmm. sound of Parneet's voice or, oh, I feel, you know, a warmth in my feet uh, or, you know, I see that image. So just noticing and labeling whatever is arising. So that's the, the essence of the open monitoring practice. And that in the research has been shown to be very helpful um, to sort of uh, create the conditions for that, for creative insights to arise. So I would highly recommend that practice uh, before a um, strategy session. Cool, excellent, thank you. Uh, Ken Riley has a question. Uh, Ken, do you wanna pose? I can, I can obviously, um, repeat the question, but if you're on and can go off mute, you might also ask the question yourself. Yeah, I, uh, I, I have the experience of um, usually waking up consistently at 3 a.m. with these creative solutions to everything I've been thinking of over the past few days or the, or the day was really intense. Does, does the human mind have a, like a regular cycle that, that, um, uh, when it expresses itself create creatively, um, what what has your research shown there? Yeah, so so first of all, I'm going to say you're very lucky if you are waking up at three a.m. with those <laughs> insights. Uh, whatever you're doing, you know, keep doing it because okay. um, you know. In so I see that from two different perspectives. One is that that the, the time between around three to, especially 3.30 to around 4.35 in the morning um, mm. is a time where sort of the, and again, I won't get into the details of it, but the, so our, our brain goes through different phases as we go from a waking state to a sleep state, right? So it goes from, um, 
uh, a beta state is the beta waves is when you're awake, then we are a little bit calmer, like during meditation is alpha. Uh, and then we get into theta, which is, uh, and then we get into deep sleep. And then the reverse sort of cycle happens in the morning as we um, start to wake up. The time around, and of course, you know, everyone has a different circadian rhythm. Everyone has, you know, these sleep cycles last for about 90 minutes at a time. And then a new sleep cycle starts. Um, what you're tapping into is a part of the sleep cycle where you are sort of in that um, alpha and theta zone, but you know, easily available or coming close to that waking state, but not quite there. And if you will think about it, that it's kind of like the communication between your conscious and your subconscious brain is almost at its peak there. Yeah. Uh, so, which is why, you know, uh, if, and th that's why the recommendation is, you know, wake up early in the morning, because that's when in that waking state, when you're not quite fully awake, but you're in that theta uh, state, you will have uh, better access to those, to those ideas. So if it's happening naturally to you, hey, nothing, you, you know, what more could you ask for? But for the rest of us, you know, we may have to make a habit of waking slightly early and we don't all need to wake up at 3 a.m. But if you can just start waking up a little bit earlier, um, that's probably a good thing. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, you want to go ahead and, and um, let's go on to the next step then. So uh, we're all, um, I guess, eyes and ears open for you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, so what, what, yeah, what I thought I would do is a very foundational practice. It's called taking a mindful moment. Uh, and this is a, a practice that you can do literally at any point of your day. Um, you, can take, you can do it within a few seconds or you can take two or three minutes to do it. It's just a way to center yourself. Uh, and I recommend that you do this, you know, first thing in the morning when you wake up or before an important phone call or maybe at the start of your team meeting or at the end of your day. Uh, just any time when you're feeling kind of frazzled and you need to anchor yourself. Uh, and in this practice, what we're doing is we're going to check into the four components of our ourselves that we bring to mind when we're being mindful. So, you know, I didn't give any definition of mindfulness. Mindfulness means keeping our breath, our body, our thoughts and our emotions in mind. And so, you know, instead of our mind wandering everywhere, we bring those things back into the present moment. And when we do that, we can then see clearly what's happening right here, right now, which then allows us to respond skillfully rather than in a knee-jerk way. And that's the whole point of being mindful is that we can respond skillfully. So let's try that out. Um, so if you would just please um, sit up in a way that's alert yet relaxed and close your eyes. And I'd like you to just answer these questions in your own mind after me. The first question is, where are you right now? So literally, physically, name the place where you are. So for example, I'm in my apartment in San Francisco. And as you do that, I want you to start noticing how often our minds and our bodies can be in very different places. So when we start to take a mindful moment, the first thing that we do is bring our mind and our body back to the same place. Next, I want you to tune into your breathing. So just do a quick check-in with your breath and notice the quality of your breath. Is it fast? Is it slow? Is it deep? Is it shallow? And again, we're not trying to change anything. We're just noticing in a very neutral way what's present. Next, uh, let's tune into our body. So how does your body feel right now?
are there areas of tension? Do you have some aches or pains somewhere? Or maybe you're feeling good in your body. Maybe you're feeling really energetic. Next, I want you to tune into your thinking. So what are the thoughts that are front and center for you right now? Just noticing the themes, maybe they're work-related thoughts or family thoughts. And finally, tuning into your emotions. So these thoughts that you're having, how do they make you feel right now? Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you anxious? Are you curious? So staying mindful in this moment means keeping your breath your body, your thoughts and emotions in mind and allowing this moment to be as it is. Holding this moment with a sense of kindness and curiosity. I'd like you to now take a couple of slightly deeper breaths at your own pace. And as you exhale, see if you can let go of any tension or tightness you might be holding on in your body. And whenever you're ready, you may open your eyes and rejoin the meeting. <laughs> Thank you. That was wonderful. Yes, My definitely. pleasure. So it's, it's, it's as much about finding an opportunity to get in touch with your thoughts and feelings, right? And understanding those as much as then um, doing something about that. Absolutely. Um, it, yeah. So it's the, fun, you know, as we, as we deepen our practice, um, we learn to become better at observing what's happening and realizing that we don't have to engage with every single thought or emotion uh, that might be coming up in our minds. And just realizing that, you know, we, we learn to identify our emotions without being identified with them. Uh, and then that allows us to have that kind of pause, especially when we might feel triggered in a situation. Uh, rather than getting caught up with it and reacting to it, uh, we can step back, take a second, breathe, and then decide, have, have more choice around how we want to respond. Great. Well, thank you very much. This was wonderful. My pleasure. Yeah. And um, thank you for inviting me, Ajay, and really good to see all of you. And um, please participate in the Mindfulness Challenge. You know, Ajay has made this available for you. Uh, so take advantage of it. It's a great way to build a new habit. And um, the Wise at Work app has hundreds of brilliant practices from some of the top mindfulness teachers. Uh, so, uh, you know, we have, just, just to give you an update, uh, we have 80 companies joining and uh, we have more than 200,000 minutes in the first week that have been clocked already. Yeah. So we are on target to reaching our goal of 1 million minutes of workplace mindfulness in October. So come join us. Great. Thank you so much. And uh, we do. This was this is great. Thank you for spending the time with us. Thank you. Thank you. Take good care. Bye.